perspectives, different views, one voice. Welcome to the LDN Perspective Podcast. My name is Kojo and I'm with my co-host. Mo, Cam, Ali. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and this is, I think this is about third or fourth week for this quarantine period for the UK anyway. And today we just wanted to really discuss some of the things we've seen on YouTube. Um, just regarding some of the Afri- Africans in different countries. And one thing I've come across from one of my brothers, Wade Maya, I'm not sure if anyone's heard of him, is he shared a video of um, the plight of some Africans in China. I think it's the Guangzhou province. Now, in that video, it was quite alarming. And just looking at their testimonies, people that have actually actually going through this, um, I think we could just really summarize by saying that for some reason, they had police knocking on their doors. So you could imagine you're just in your house, police knock on the door, and they tell you that you need to um, leave their premises. Some of them are having landlords giving them a day for them to take all their stuff and leave the premises. Um, The police are seizing passports. A lot of them are not being given any access to uh, medical care. Um, A lot of them are being refused entry to like hotels, to restaurants, and to even to um, public transport. Um, I believe in one case, someone jumped on the bus and all everyone kind of came up. Now, I guess the question for this is, where is this coming from? And it was quite funny when I found out that this is because in China, in the Guangzhou province, there has been some rumor going around that Africans are spreading coronavirus. And I think it's key that we mention here Africans because apparently the police are checking your passport and they will only treat you like that if you are from Africa. So, for instance, if one of us that holds a British passport, even though we're from Africa, if we hold a British passport and we're in that province, if the police check our passport, they might not. We might not go under that treatment because even though we're Africa, from Africa, we're holding a British passport, so we're a British citizen, so we might not really experience that. And I guess really just as part of what a lot of YouTubers are sharing, I thought, this might be an interesting conversation for us to have on our platform. Um, so I'm wondering what you guys think of this, whether you guys have come across this or what do you guys really think of this kind of like breakdown that I've given so far? Perspectives, different views, one voice. I think, Hojo, that is absolutely disgusting, mate. Despicable. Unforgivable. I'm deeply appalled and infuriated how they could be targeting my fellow Africans in such a manner, especially yeah, on just a rumour. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, so I guess there'll be a follow-on to that. But someone do need to pay your English teacher, though. I like the way you constructed that. <laughs> <laughs> you started like a politician just then. <laughs> Yeah. What do you uh, what do you other guys think? Uh, um, I think it's disgrace and um, appalling and um, unsatisfactory. The fact that what is going on because I'm actually following it up as well. And um, the f- the whole point of this coronavirus that has been going on has literally come from China, and they're trying to literally turn it around, acting as if it is nothing to do with them. It's Africans. And those people in Africa have already been there. So how can they bring it to China? It does not make sense whatsoever. I think it's just part of the politicians and the racism that is just trying to come in out more to say, you know what, this is what we are about. But they're putting it on the carpet to make sure they're about oh, coronavirus, which is rubbish. I just think it's rubbish. So that's what my opinion is towards that. Cam, have you come across this yourself or is this the first you're hearing of it? This is, this, this is the first I'm hearing about this, um, to be honest. But, you know, if it is the case and that's how they're treating um, African nationals in China, then, you know, it's, it, it is completely disgraceful, disgusting. Um, it, 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 so it, it, you know, I'm trying to really, it makes no sense, you know, towards uh, why they would treat Africans like that. But then obviously they must have been harboring feelings towards Africans for a long time. This is not anything new. Sounds like this just can't be something new and they're just targeting Africans now. Um, mm. There certainly must have been some sort of feelings towards them before. And Especially when they know that it started there. Yeah, and, and maybe this is just an opportunity for them to sort of drive through that sort of propaganda. I don't know. 
And, and, and it's funny you say that though. It's, it's interesting because from the looks of it, so for instance, from some of the videos I've followed so far, if you have a landlord calling you, so you can imagine your landlord calls you and says to you, you know what, the community does not want you here. So based on that, you need to kind of like leave as soon as possible, which is interesting in itself because with that, is it the people of China or is this coming from the top? Do you get what I mean? Um, but obviously with the police action to this as well, is what even makes it, more, what even kind of cements that this is more of like a structured kind of, um, kind of thing that they're doing. And then obviously when you look at these Africans that are there, and it's not necessarily, some are living there, some are like schooling there, attending universities, but a lot of them are like businessmen and businesswomen who are like literally going to China to actually import like goods into Africa. That, that yeah. obviously, because economies of scale in China is way cheaper than anywhere else. So a lot of the people that are there are actually there to do business. So I find it quite, yeah, when you actually think of it, it doesn't really make much sense with people that actually there in your country to do business, for you to treat them that way. The most important thing right now is not picking or raising or attacking anyone. It's to sort out the situation that is going on. And every country within this nation should be focusing on that. Racism is the least that need to be done or need to be need to be addressed at all, you know. And um, find it really disgraceful, to be frank. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I did want to come in. I, I think it is it is easy to jump on the whole racism bandwagon, um, but then it comes back to how when we were talking about the whole in South Africa and how politicians will play the game of targeting immigrants um, and in a country like China you'll, you'll, you'll definitely find that a lot of immigrants would be they'll on this occasion would happen to be Africans that's not to say that there isn't any racism at all but it's just I just I can see when we were mentioning the whole um, system kind of implement of it how the police are involved landlords blah 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 I think the whole escape goats of immigrants on a political level is the easiest and the most convenient for a lot of political platforms or regimes or whatever. No, I, I, find, I find that, I find, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, but I found it a bit kind of like offline because there's other races there as well. There's, there's, there's um, Australians there, there's Malaysians there, there's also people out there. Why target one race? You know, that's why I mentioned the, the part of racism. I'm not disputing what you're saying. Yes, part of what you're saying kind of makes sense. But when you're targeting one race, one one part of um, nation, there's an agenda there, as Paul Joe mentioned. Why is it coming from the police? If it's coming from the public or from the community, then you can address it and say, okay, that might not be racism. That's just saying that it's just being scared. But if you're coming from the board and the police, it doesn't make no sense. There's something not fish, There's something fishy about it. That's what I have to say about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really unusual. I mean, I'm looking at a few articles on Google. So whilst we're talking, I'm just Googling stuff. And it, I'm, I'm seeing things like, Af- there's one article I'm seeing here on Hong Kong Free Press. And the headline for the article said, Africans in China subjected to forced evictions, arbitrary quarantines and mass testing. And I mean, I'm just trying... I mean, I'm trying to really understand the logic of, of this because from what I understand, we already know where um, the, the, the coronavirus originated. And yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to understand why they would target the African community in the way that they're doing so. It doesn't really, none of it makes sense to me unless they, just, you know, there was just, there were feelings of resentment towards them in the first place. And then this is just an opportunity for them to, 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 to target that community. None of this makes any the, sense to me. They're the easiest to target. Because if you're going for any African nations, people, whatever, a lot of their governments aren't going to step in and intervene or do anything at all, which is why unfortunate. Talk, but why, why target them? Why? Yeah. Because it's I, easy. I, no, I, I understand it's easy. But yeah. I'm just trying to I, see with these sort of things, I have to make sense of them. And I just can't even make sense of this. It doesn't even make sense to me. 
Like, I understand that it's easy to get rid of them. I, why I, do you want to get rid sense. of? Why do you want to get rid of them if you were allowing them in the borders in the first place? That's what exactly. I'm trying to make it's, sense it's, of. It's, 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 I don't think it's a getting rid of them. I think it's more how do you justify things that you want to do in the background? You have to have some kind of smoke screen in the forefront to portray that. So at the moment, it's the whole racism, blah blah blah. But then it. By then, by allowing the community to look down on these set of people, stuff could be the whole testing, doing the whole vaccine stuff or whatever, using these people to do blah, blah, blah. And no one's going to care because you've already vilified them. You don't okay. see them as human anymore. Okay, okay, I get what you're saying. So that, that's, that's one narrative. That's one way to look at it about the whole, you're talking about the whole vaccine and testing the vaccine on certain... Guys, guys, guys can you pause one? Um article that you read in terms of the whole mass testing and stuff like that sure African yeah. communities yeah i think i think also added to this though and i, I think i think china is inherently racist um and i'll back up what i'm saying with with some stuff that um i found out so i'm not sure how much you guys follow like um like youtube videos but there's a lot of youtube videos where you have like the chinese going into africa so they might go to a village and they might teach the children how to speak Chinese, or it's not actually how to speak Chinese, it's Mandarin, right? Please, please correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Mandarin? Yeah. It's correct, right? Yeah, that's one, that's one language, that's one dialect, yeah. Yeah, Mandarin, yeah, you're correct. But, but that's, the main, that's the main one, isn't it? I'm just going for the main yeah. one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So they'll teach them how to speak Mandarin, and they will get the children to kind of repeat words that they've been taught, and there's one particular video where the, the, the kids are repeating, I have a low IQ, I'm a monkey, I'm this and stuff. And this is something that they'll go back and share back in China. Now, that's one thing. Also, one thing that you need to look out for. So, for instance, when you look out for... Yeah, it just so means for, that it's going to last longer. Okay. So, f- first of all, the racial agenda is the whole reason of you being black. And there was an example of some... A black family... Not a black family, but... Um, 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 what's the word? Multi racial family in China. I think they literally just flew into China. The lady was from, they were both, I think the lady was more from America and from the US. And the, the guy could be a US citizen, but he had a strong African accent. And when the police knocked in the door, they said to the guy that the, girl, the guy had to self-quarantine for 14 days. However, the lady is free to move around as she pleases. Yet they share a room, they live in the same house. So with that alone, that does not make any sense. So even if it's on the basis of coronavirus and you need to self-quarantine, how can one person self-quarantine whilst the other is freely allowed to roam around? If you remember the conversation we had in the past where they have that, the traffic light system, red means you self-quarantine, yellow is like your amber, and then green is like your, your, you, you could roam around. He had, I think, yellow, and then the wife had green, which makes no sense. So just the basis of that alone, you know there's more underlying conversations that are being had. And then when you move on to the whole nationality stuff. So I'm basing this to say, one, it's because we are black, and the second part is because of where you're from. So on the nationality part, because maybe the US and the UK and other Western countries might put more pressure on China if they're treating their citizens like that, then it's fair gains for them to go after Africans like that. So yes, one point that you made more, which is right, is that in, yeah. in most countries, the marginalized communities are immigrants. And most of the time in these countries, when you go after immigrants, the most of the population are not going to care because at the end of the day, they're meant to be immigrants or whatever you want to call them. So when you're seeing that trend going on and then you're seeing that, okay, black people are being treated differently based on nationality, but mainly they're still going for black people, then I could only come up with one thing. Yes, someone could say to me, I'm adding one plus one and coming up with three, but when I'm seeing my, my people just being rounded up like that in China and they get a better treatment in Africa, then I can only conclude one thing. Yeah, I mean, I think everything you said is definitely correct. Um, and it's, it, it's one of them things whereby racism can never really be confirmed or proven, in it? So as much as it is true, there's never really going to be an outline kind of, yes, that's definitely 100% racism or something like that. And, and, and that's why I mentioned in terms of how they might use other ways of communication or influence to attack a particular race because they fall under one particular category. So, i.e. in another country, the whole um, 
going after immigrants and then the immigrants all happen to be African and even the whole just concentrating on those directly from African countries. And I think that's more of a letdown on our kind of African leaders in terms of how they don't protect their citizens. And this is widely known by everybody else. And then there's also the other aspect whereby even if some of those African countries did feel that they could do something or say something, that those bigger powers at the table might just think, well, who cares what you say? Or you don't really have no kind of weight or say in anything. Um, all you're going to do is throw your toys out of the pram and scream and shout and cry, but it doesn't really mean nothing, if you get what I mean. Yeah, no, I totally agree. You, you just mentioned a good point there regarding the response of some of these African leaders. And then following on from some of the stuff that I've seen, for some reason, whilst they've been kicked out from their houses and they're trying to find somewhere to go, you go to the restaurant, you can't buy food, hotels are not taking you. I even saw a video of a pregnant woman that wanted to get a checkup. And then you had one of the nurses coming out of the hospital saying that she can't be seen, which is really crazy. When you're actually thinking the levels of this, uh, you're being denied medical care, which is, which is crazy in itself. So I think whilst they were being rounded up, I'm not sure why they were being rounded up, but from the video, it looked like the police were just following them. And they, then they ended up sleeping on the street somewhere. But during the night time, I think there was a Nigerian envoy that actually went there to speak to the police. And his main question was, why were these people being treated this way? So he asked the question around why their passports were being even seized, because they, they have legitimate grounds to, to, to stay in the country. And he, he mentioned something around that that's a property for Nigerian, um, for, for, for Nigeria, not, not China. So China cannot actually seize the passport. So I think... That was one of the main reactions that I've seen. But obviously with this, I don't just want to make it like a Nigerian thing. I've also seen a lady from Uganda that was actually voicing a lot of the things that they're actually going, going through. Um, I think in the past three months, they've been under quarantine and actually talking about some of the measures and some of the pressures that um, they are actually currently facing. So, so that is one thing that I believe Nigeria is doing. And to add it to that as well, um, the Nigerian... The Nigerian High Commission, the Nigerian, uh, wait, what's his name? Yeah, the Nigerian Commissioner, uh, actually spokesperson for the government, um, a gentleman by the name of Fermi Jagba Biamila, actually um, welcomed the Chinese ambassador in Nigeria. I think his name is Zhao Ping Zhang, um, on Friday to actually um, raise these kind of issues that are happening in China. And he was kind of quite alarmed and said that, look, they, they kind of needed a response from, the, from China authorities to actually um, understand what's going on and what they are prepared to do because Nigerian citizens should not be treated like that. So I'm not sure whether a lot of it is more like for social media because we are kind of following up. And I know a lot of the people that I follow that talk about kind of African events are all kind of broadly like speaking about this. I think even um, one person that we all follow... Um, I forgot this guy on Instagram. Shaka Bass. Shaka Bass actually shared this as well. So there is a lot of people kind of following this. But in general, the representative of House for the Nigerian government literally just said to the um, Chinese ambassador um, in, in Nigeria that this is unacceptable because Nigerians do not treat citizens of China like that in Nigeria. So how can they be treating Nigerians like that in, in their country? And I think, obviously, with politics, a lot of the responses that you are getting back was to say that, oh, we don't know what's going on, we don't know what's going on. But I want to understand, even if Nigeria is doing this, in, I know that in China it's not just Nigerians that are there. I mentioned Ugandans. I've even heard that there's some Ghanaians um, out there as well. And obviously, people of different nationalities from Africa might be there. How come there isn't more of a uniform response? Maybe that's not something I've come across, but... Why are we always on this but, like, end of things, man? There are people always being treated like this. Perspectives, different views, one voice. Yeah, I think probably some of that can come from the fact that there's, there's a lack of uniformity amongst countries in Africa in terms of sort of working in unison. Um, that, that might play a part because, I mean, when you're playing politics, it's really all about your bargaining chips how much you know power so to speak you've got when it comes to sort of getting things done and 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming here, I don't necessarily know what the case is um, in between um, other countries not pushing sort of Chinese government, or maybe they have, maybe there have been conversations behind closed doors, who knows, I don't know, but um, I think the starting point is a lack of uniformity amongst, say, African countries in, in sort of working together. Um, um, I know when it comes to the whole politics side, there's quite a lot of factors. So, for example, a lot of it could be China's uh, economic uh, foreign policies, and a lot of them is how they've come to Africa and they've paid a lot of debt of some of these African countries. Um, they've helped build a lot of the road infrastructures and stuff and things like that. And I know with some of these ministers, they feel like they can't comment or say too much because of all these other commitments they have with China in that sense, or not even that in terms of their own personal financial benefit they could be getting from China. And so with certain things, they may not want to push it or they might just close a blind eye to it or even allow it. And then vice versa, you also find that a lot of the Chinese officials, they may feel that they can get away with it because of the influence they know they have on some of these African leaders or ministers in terms of certain deals or arrangements which they might have made in the past or uh, arranged for the future. Yeah, what I'm saying, both what both are saying makes sense. But however, there's another deeper side to it as well. Most of these politicians in Africa they don't care at all. They don't care. Whether they're getting a benefit, they're not getting a benefit. Whether, whatever it is that the situation is, they just do not care because their most agenda is, is just to be in power as long as they can, manipulate as much as they can, influence as much as they can. And once they're done, they pass it on to their best friend or their family. That's what they care about. They do not care. It's like, how can I put it? Ghana is a perfect example. And then that, that country as well, you know that guy, um, Mo, the one that is 40 years old, one of the youngest um, politicians, what's his name? Is it, in, is it in Ghana, Uganda? I'm not sure. Rwanda, Rwanda you're talking about. Yeah, Rwanda, for example. Like, them two, what I'm noticing for, what I'm observing, them two, I don't think any other nation in this world would take the piss out of any of their, um, their people at all. Those two government or prime minister, you can say, because they... Definitely, them two won't, take, won't tolerate it. If something like that happens to Ghana, there will have to be a consequences. You understand? Consequence in the sense of not, they don't care about trading or anything like that. But majority of the countries in Africa, that's what I'm thinking. From my side of it, I don't think they do not care. Period. If it's nothing to do with their family or their friends, I don't think they care. Because at the end of the day, they're just Africans, they're just black. So who, what, what else? Yeah, I, I, I do see Ali's point, though in that with a lot of politicians in Africa, there's a lot of self-interest in terms of pursuing their own goals. That, that tends to be the, um, the, 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 the depiction a lot of the time. And, and so one simple response in terms of like African governments not doing anything could be as simple as what Ali said. They just don't care. Yeah, no, yeah. I totally, totally understand that. But I think, yeah, and, and I, I'm not even, I, I guess history has shown us that um, we've always been crippled. So I, I feel like, just talking about Africa in general, I feel like sometimes uh, it's not their one of So, Coach, not to cut you off, I did want to say, for me, as much as I do agree with some don't care, I just want to make it clear that I, it's something that I personally don't want to believe or entertain in my mind. I just feel that, yeah, Africa is difficult, it's hard, there's struggles and stuff. And there are certain leaders in place that might join with the genuine intentions of helping the community and then over time they get corrupted and blah, blah, blah. But I do feel if there isn't any other kind of personal gain of doing something, I do want to believe that a lot of them would do something, if you get what I mean. Not that they just completely don't care, even if there isn't no self-benefit or interest at all. I was going to say, I think history has shown us that we have had leaders that do care. Um, but ob obviously, there's always been like other influences to make sure that those people are not in leadership positions. And yeah. I think, obviously, with the current kind of challenges. So, for instance, when we, when we talk about investment, 
And I think that's one, one of the things, first things that Mo brought up. I think since, um, since 2005 to 2018, um, Chinese investment in, African, in Africa um, has been about 299 billion from that period. So when you think of this and you think about this investment, it's not just when something like this happens, it's not all guns blazing kind of thing. You have to be more tactful. I think sometimes giving our positions and not being in certain positions where making one decision could lead to another, we could then talk a bit blasé about some of these things. And the reason why I say that is that even when we go back to the conversation we had about South Africa and Nigeria, I do vividly remember about what I thought the Nigerian president should be doing and all those kind of stuff. But then looking back, when you look at some of these issues, you do need the politics. You, need, you do need diplomacy to actually iron them out. The only thing I feel like you need to ensure is that moving forward, that doesn't happen again. So what I'm trying to say here is that given this situation, given how much investment that uh, China has in um, Africa, whether you like it or not, that will cripple your power to a certain extent. But even yeah. if that was not the case, when such things happen, I feel like there has to be more diplomacy rather than just all guns kind of blazing where you're not really in a position to be firing shots, if that makes any sense. Um, so in, 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 in relation what, to what I'm saying, I know that there's been some kind of, and this is kind of happening in Africa, where I know in Kenya there have been people that are kind of like saying that they're not serving like Chinese in restaurants and all those kind of stuff. So there is backlash to, 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 to some of these events that we actually kind of um, seen unfold, um, unfold ahead of us. Um, I do remember there was a video circulating of one African country where there were two Chinese people like on the bus, but that was more to do with the whole coronavirus fear. And the minute that they enter the bus, you, you start seeing people coming out of the bus. Um, so there is, there is some movements happening. Um, a lot of people will say to you that Africa is not like the old Africa. People are awake, especially with social media. It's giving people a voice and it's giving the people a voice to actually talk about some of these things, which would have never reached a lot of households without kind of like um, technology. I'll say the internet um, to, to, to be clean with this. Um, so, so I feel like, yes, we do say a lot of these things and I'm not saying that we shouldn't. I'm not saying that we shouldn't hold our politicians accountable, especially with the situations that we find ourselves in. But is there not a point of diplomacy as well, resolving some of these issues? Perspectives, different views, one voice. What I wanted to say is um, you made a point, a valid point about... Um, trading right so you're saying that since 2005 was it 2005 that you mentioned yeah to 2018 there's been about 300 billion okay from China. all right all right bear this in mind um was it japan right japan that went to the war was it japan that went to the war with america right yeah pearl harbor can you okay cool when that happened um america donate quite millions millions quite a few millions to japan to try and help them out, to invest them in the economy and everything like that, right? And then, but if you realize, America didn't take the advantage or whatsoever towards Japan because they know something about Japan. If they evo evolve the economy, they will benefit from it, which they are benefiting from till now. So you did raise a point, but at the same time, that shouldn't be the, the point. Whether or not Japan, it's like you saying, you giving me, you've borrowed me a bit of money, right? And because you kind of attack me or, or, or do anything towards me, it's just a theory, right? Just, it's just a theory, just trying to understand this. Just a basic term of it. So if you want to be violent towards me, so that means I don't have any power, any voice to say anything, that don't give you the right to be doing anything. So if you're saying in that kind of terms, I think that is a bit wrong because whether or not, a country is investing or vice versa and also give the other country the right to try to violate or do anything towards that. That's what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. Yeah. You're absolutely uh, right in the point that you've made. I totally agree in the point that you've made, but I guess the point that I was, I was making, which I'll throw back to um, Cameron more again, I'll, is that I'll, sometimes I'll, through these kind of relations, diplomacy yeah. has to actually take hold rather than you treat me this way and I'll treat you that way kind of stuff. 
Yeah. Yeah. What's it called? Let me come in. With, with the whole Japan thing, though, so what, so what Ali mentioned was when um, the US pays Japan, that's their kind of respirations, basically, in terms of the damage that they've done to Japan and to some of their people. But in, in, in terms of that, how, how that came about, that wasn't just, oh, um, J- Japan asked for it and then the America said, okay, yeah, let's do it. Japan asked a few times and they were told no. What happened is Japan then went away and said, all right, forget it. Let's improve our economy. They became a big tech economy and basically told the US, look, if you want to benefit from any of the advances that we have, you need to basically pay us our our respirations and the money that you owe us for the damage that you've done. So basically, Japan came back to the table on a stance of that you have to basically pay us back or... Um, give us our respirations in um, in, in in that magnitude. Um, so it's it's not something whereby countries just feel like they can just start willy nilly paying these countries back for the damage they've done or anything like that. Africa has to first be in a position of development or come to it to the table in some kind of um, power or might that sense whereby they have something to bring to the table before any of those let's say diplomacy um, talks can even happen Africa do not need to go to the table they've already got something on the table that's what I'm trying to say so to the, flip it, they to got? the other side they've got materials they've got minerals they've got millions they don't, they don't and millions. Own none of that I'm talking about Africa I'm not talking about in China yeah, yeah but Africa don't own those m- minerals or materials within the country itself that's what I'm referring to yeah, they gave a lot of them away. Yeah, because they're trying to deal deal, which is a corruption deal. But by right, they're supposed to know they're doing the deal right. That's what I'm trying to say. So because yeah. of that, China thinks that yeah, they got the power to whatever manipulate the situation. Because it, you're not going to come to my backyard, we make a deal, and then me on my backyard, on my deal, I don't do the deal right. If I'm corrupt and I do the deal wrong, then you've got all the right and the power to come to me and manipulate me or violate me. Because I didn't do the deal right. That's what that's what has happened to Africa, and that's what's happening in Africa. But if they did the deal right, and I've got my material, my background, backyard, right, everything will be fine. Does that make sense? Yeah, but Ali, yeah, but- I, I fully I fully understand that and I accept that. But as you've as, as you've me- as you've mentioned, if the deal has not been done correctly, then you have your hands tied behind your back. So whether you're the president of whatever country, what can you really say if you've sold the stands? Hey. Exactly. To, 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 to your natural resources for the next hundred years to a Chinese firm. Exactly. Like, That's why I said the word, they do not care. That's why I say the word, they do not care. Because all of these art, articles, what we're discussing here, yeah, all of this adds into it. They do not care. If they care about the people, they could not care about the country, care about the community, care about hundred years' time, none of this will happen. They do not care. That's the reason why I use the term, they do not care. There's a reason why I use that term. It's not because they're saying personal, emotionally, or uh, heartlessly, or, or, or physically. It's because all of these terms that it's adding, that's what we're discussing, they do not care. Okay. There's one thing I, of I raising think, your household, and you have to care about your household. I think, I, think, I think the point that you made is valid, but it's invalid in certain, um, certain situations. So if you give the example of someone selling a site to gold or diamond or whatever, not for 100 yeah. years... That yeah. government could be out of power. If I come in governance, it doesn't mean I don't care for my people. It just means I don't have my choice because those deals have been made already. So it's not fair for us to, to say that every government or most government in Africa do not care. It's just that sometimes you have to live with the historical mistakes that your predecessors have made. Okay. So that's not necessarily it's fair to say that they do not care. Right. Well, okay. I do understand where you're coming from. But All I think right. Can I, I'd like to draw me... this back to the conversation to say... Even on the point that you're saying, whether they do care, they do not care. Whether the deal was agreed properly or the deal was not agreed properly. In some of these situations, don't you guys think that it's not always like an arm for, like, as they say in the Bible, I think Old Testament. Um, what do they say? An arm for an eye. Yeah, eye. An eye. Yeah. And then the New Testament says, you know, they slap you, you know, turn the other cheek. Um, yeah. Sometimes is it not more of like turning the other cheek? Not in the sense of letting them keep slapping you, but be more diplomatic and trying to resolve the situation rather than going for an eye for an eye? Because sometimes it's not just necessarily that they have more power over you or you have more power over them. It just means that something has happened 
people have behaved in a way that they shouldn't, and that issue needs to be resolved rather than Africans also treating Chinese that way. Um, what do you guys think? That's more of what I'm trying to kind of talk about regarding the diplomacy. Perspectives, different views, one, one voice. voice. One voice. One voice. One voice. It, it, it makes sense. You're right, what you're saying. Can you hear me? Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. It's not about saying you move, someone slaps you, you turn the other way. Obviously, in this kind of situation, the politician, the diplomatic side of it, they need to be an outline of contract, law in place. When I mean law in place, it's to say, if my people are in your country, treat them right, vice versa. It's not to, what Africans are doing to China within their countries, that is not right either. You understand? That's the boundaries that are just stepping up. So obviously it's going to affect as well in another foreign country like China. But in history, Chinese have been racist towards that in general. But prior to that, it's nothing to say or whatever. This is more about politicians and this is more about diplomacy about into it as well. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, in that sense, they have to be, I think for me, they have to be a contract that needs to be drawn and settled properly before any of these things can be accountable for. So... I'll, I'll ask the question in another way. Thanks for that, Ali. But is it, sometimes does it just get to a level where you really just have to switch for an eye for an eye rather than all this diplomacy or knowing that you can't really do anything? Because how do people learn? Like in, in, for, 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 for things to change, there has to be a revolution. So the example of the, what you said, Mo, is that Japan had to go away and fix up the economy or there's been revolutions about what civil rights where people really had to die for their lives in order for black people to get the rights that they have now. So is it not just sometimes just really just saying enough is enough rather than trying to be diplomatic? Perspectives, different views, one voice. Yeah, and I, and I personally go for that stance. I reckon, look, if Africa just said, bam, no more imports from China, straight. Do you know how much of a blow that will be? to the Chinese government, they have to listen. Whether or not they've got this deal or whatever in Africa and these billions and blah, 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 they'll try and levy all those things. But if they're not, if they're not selling no more goods because they are a very heavily exporting country, then most of their money is made from the exports that they do. If no one is bringing in, especially somewhere like Nigeria that has over 200 million um, people, they'll have to listen. No, you're, you're right in that sense. But I think Africa making that decision will affect a lot of people, a lot of businesses, a lot of businessmen, businesswomen that will not be able to trade. So the example of this and what happens where these kind of things happen is that you might actually have your own people in the country trying to tell you that, no, nah, no, nah, you, you need to stop this because I'm losing my livelihood. Then I'm not making money because I can't go to China and bring these things in for people to buy. And that's the thing when you look at economies of scale, isn't it? Because when you look at the economics of it, it's not such an easy thing, decision to make, unless you're producing a lot of these produce in your country as well. If you're not, the demand will outweigh, and that demand might actually, lose, um, might actually lead to people within your country actually, you know, making some sort of suggestions or demonstrating or whatever it is for you to actually look at those laws. So I think there are challenges there. It's not so just easy to say, it, um, stop Chinese produce from coming into the country? I think in, in, in terms of the produce, they're not going to have a problem in terms of obtaining it. There's so many other countries that produce everything that China does. All it is is China does it as a much cheaper uh, yeah. amount. So it's the profit margin. Then, profit margin. Yeah, but then, but then the, other, the, the, other, the, other, the other thing also is they also give Africa the worst quality. So, yes that our people would be paying more, the margins will be smaller, um, but one, they'll be getting better products, and two, that is capitalism and survival of business. You adapt, you help your country adapt, don't it? Yes, it's less money, the, the profits ain't gonna be a much, but there is, it's not gonna be zero profit. No, so, no, so what you're saying, it's not that I disagree, but I think, so countries like Ghana and Ivory Coast have actually shown this, um, La Cote d'Ivoire, if you want to call it the other name, um, have actually shown the power of coming together in a sense that they, they're the two um, biggest um, production, they produce the most cocoa in the world. And they were selling at different prices. 
So I think when the Ghanaian president came in, he just spoke to his Ivorian counterpart and said, you know what, evil, no, he actually went to the Western world or whoever the buyers are and said, look, we need to raise the price of cocoa. And they were like, no, they're not having it. How can you raise it? So he spoke to his Ivorian counterpart and said, look, if we both stay that, you best reduce it, you best raise it or we're not selling, at some Mm. point we'll have to raise it. So I think they did that. There was like a deadlock for about a month or two. And then... And then that had to change where we're getting better returns for our cocoa. So yeah, I do agree. But with the cocoa, it's in the actual government hands. I said, why is the, why, the government? When you mentioned about the cocoa, why is it a government that only can tackle this? Because it's a government produce. It's something that the government have direct influence over. This is not individuals going to China to import diapers into the country or going to China to bring, I don't know, some electronic goods into the country. That's not the same. This is a government kind of thing. So the government has direct control to say that we are not exporting this from our country unless you give us a better rate. If you're doing this for individuals, the individual's bottom line is going to be hurt. People in the country are not mind not getting employment because that employment is based on that diapers coming into the country and then selling it on so that the profit margins is able to be split around. So when you're doing that, the individuals in the country might be yeah. saying, look, what you're doing, I can understand what you're doing, but for me, it's not helping me because I'm not able to feed my, my, my children. I need this because this is what I, I, I'm able to make my business from. That's what okay. I'm saying. So you have to understand okay. the impact of that. But what I was just going to move on to is that... Perspectives, different views, one voice. There's a, there's a separate coin to the conversation where the, the, chair, the chairwoman for the Diaspora of Commission, Commissioner for Nigeria... Um, I think uh, the name, her name is Honorable Abike Dabiri Ewiwa. Um, she was interviewed and she was posed the same question. He said, oh, we've seen videos circulating on YouTube about how some of our citizens are being treated. And I think she gave a totally separate account to events that were going on there. So what she mentioned was to say that people were tested and then they were quarantined in a hotel for 14 days. And after the quarantine period, they were told to go back home. Obviously, this sounds like an official statement coming from China. And these people did not want to go back home. So that's why the police were following them around, which does not really kind of actually... Let me well, go back home, like to the country. No, to go back to the, where they stay, the hotels or whatever that is being said. Okay. Um, so, and then she went on to say that there, there's like a, China, a Nigerian mission... I think a mission is like a center where you can kind of go if like you're a citizen and you're having certain issues in Guangzhou. And she was saying that, look, um, if people are sleeping on the streets, they could go there. And then the people at that mission could speak to the higher commission and they could arrange for them to be brought back to Nigeria. Um, But she was almost kind of making out to say that it's not the Chinese government that are mistreating black people. It's more black people that are just walking around aimlessly in the country. And then they kind of using social media. And she kind of just said that she doesn't want to be, she's not going to be bullied through social media. So it's almost like the videos that are being shared, it's almost like to bully the government to do something. Um, I'm not sure what you guys kind of think of that or whether you guys came across this as part of the story as well. Well, I saw, I saw a, a, a writing that one of the black guys was going into the restaurant and the writing actually stated that you can't, don't allow black people to, to use the, the restaurant. That's correct. I've seen that myself. So what, what, what kind of a statement that she's saying then, which I'm seeing that it's not like someone edit that video and put that, that, that right in there. That don't make no so, sense. So which is interesting, some of the comments that you made Ali, before, because this kind of clearly shows, though, that sometimes the people in power, instead of really drilling down on the issue and trying to deal with the issue, it almost becomes a thing of pacifying and almost making the people that are being abused as the perpetrators instead of the people that need kind of like saving, if you get what I mean. So yeah, I, f- I feel yeah. like that kind of really supports that kind of conversation that you said earlier. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I, I just think it just comes down to the whole dirty game of politics, right? Don't trust politicians. They always have a personal agenda. And yeah, it's just disgusting, personally. And like, like you said, almost 300 billion paid and in, invested into Africa. Of course, some of these politicians are going to start turning on their own people. Perspectives, different views, one voice. Okay. So maybe let's just wrap it up to just final thoughts on, on this conversation. Have a uni- uni- unified action or response towards it all. 
Um, and another one is holding all the Chinese diplomats in their respective countries and writing a letter to all of them and having some kind of meeting where they have to provide some kind of explanation or clarification as to what exactly is going on. That's the kind of diplomatic approach, I would say, as you mentioned earlier, in terms of how to approach it. Um, and then another one as citizens is you, um, we need to either do the whole boycotting or something and just thinking, look, how, how are we helping to support China to have such an influence or big hold on us, especially in our economies? Could it be that um, if you have businesses in African countries, um, reduce the, the units you need to kind of um, order from China or work on finding some kind of alternatives, um, be it through economies of scales, partnering up with other businesses, and then all of you um, importing together, which could then reduce the cost. Um, all those kind of little things, but they do add weight over time, especially if everyone is all doing the same. That's my kind of thoughts on it. And what do you think we can do? Um, As in people of uh, African um, descent, but uh, do not necessarily live in Africa, or? Uh, I reckon do what we're doing today bringing up the conversation, talking about it, highlighting it, mentioning it to others. Um, as Cam said, um, even he had no idea about this until today, until we brought it up. I think that in itself is something we should try and minimise because if our own people here have no idea what's been happening to our people across the land, then how do we expect for any change or any action to happen? Excellent. Thanks for that, Mo. Um, Ali? Um, well, for me, um, there can be a huge change which can happen. I'm going to just um, highlight just a few, just a tiny bit of it. And so can, you break it, can you break it down like this for me? One is a change, what Africans in, Africans in Africa should be doing, what the Chinese government should be doing. Actually, what the national governments in Africa should be doing, what the Chinese government should be doing, and what we should be doing as people of African kind of heritage? Well, first of all, what the government in, Af in China should be doing is address it because obviously they duplicate. They are a bit like politicians within the country, so they should make sure that they, the community and the people are aware what is happening is a disgrace to their nation. They should make sure that they put that by law because obviously they, they are very highly in technology, so they can spread the news very fast. And also the police, they should a, make sure that other, other, other people of colors, they are protected. And it's not because of what is happening. And the least about it as well, we're going through this coronavirus. The least we don't need is just racism or anything that is account, that's happening because first of all, it came from China and the situation started from China. So why are they turning it around? And then second of all, for the African leaders, the perhaps maybe the all African leaders, they all should come together and address the situation and see how they are going to make sure that they um, address this properly towards every nation, not only China, because if they put, if they put their feet down towards China, they need to make sure that they address this to the whole of the countries. And then the thirdly, us as a Africans, individual, whether in East, whether in the West, whether in the South, we need to make sure that, as Mo has mentioned, if Cam, for example, hasn't heard this about it at all, everyone needs to know, um, need to hear, um, able to address the situation and hear about it because we Black people are very good at sharing information. But when it comes to us getting bullied or getting violated, majority of us don't know about it. But when something is not important to us, you know, we're not, we don't want to know, or we don't know about it. That is a bit, that's a bit, a bit, a bit crazy because why the BBC in this country are not highlighting the situation in the news? Why is that? So for everyone to know, and it's appalling and it's a disgrace and it's a shame, you know? So for me, that's what I think anyway. Well, thank you for that, Ali. Um, I think really, really and truly, there is not much I could add from um, how Ali and Mo, you've kind of wrapped it up. I totally agree. 
I think this has to be on a united front. And I totally agree with the comment that Ali made where it has to be a united front against all countries, not just China, but we need to kind of have a united front to protect our own kind of people. And yeah, and, and the other point with us sharing this message, hence the reason why we have this platform. So really not much to add from me, but come, I was wondering if you had anything to add before we wrapped up. Um, no, not much more to add. I mean, I think it's right. I think there needs to be a unified response from the countries of Africa. Um, and, and obviously there needs to be an opportunity where China can sit down and listen to what's going on and see what sort of change can be enacted within their borders as to um, prevent these sort of things from taking place or even if it is taking place now to make sure something like this never happens again. I mean, I think it's just, it's really just about having a much more unified response to this. As I said, trying to also informing those in their diaspora um, about what is going on, because I think once um, they're informed on it, and I guess if, you, if you're informed on it, then you can give it so much more exposure and it, and it creates a lot more bad PR as well for like China, which I'm sure they, they don't like, especially because they're, they're, they're a state which put, you know, in particular, lacks of control, what sort of form of media comes out from there. So I think that in itself might, might help. Well, thank thanks. you for thank you for wrapping this up. And I think just based on some of the stuff that you said, especially the last thing you kind of mentioned um, around being informed. And I think obviously in order for us to be informed and to have these conversations, we need all our listeners. I know we have listeners from all over, all, all over the world. So if you've come across anything that's happening um, to black people, please let us know. You could always send us an email to our ldnperspective at gmail.com. You could always get in touch with us on our Instagram handle, um, LDN Perspective. And yeah, just drop a comment. Like, Let us know some of these things that are going on so we could bring it up and talk about it on the platform and kind of share that so other people are also aware of this and keep our people informed. So once again, thank you for listening to the LDN Perspective podcast. And you hear from us next week. Thank you. Bye bye. Perspectives, different views, one, one voice. voice.